Hello community! Multi-head self-attention mechanism in Transformers, given the example of Bird. How to explain the self-attention mechanism? You know, I was encountered with this challenge and I have to tell you, this is my first attempt. So let's have a look. I think I would like the explanation to start with a static word embedding. And word embedding is all that it's about. Now, if you think about word to vec, we have a static word embedding. So this means the word embedding, the vector of the word bank, has a vector representation like this, for example, in all the sentences. This is it. So if you look here at the example, sitting on a bank next to a river, thinking about my empty bank account, you see that the word bank here and the word bank here have the exact same vector representation independent of the context of bank to the other words here. Yeah, this is what we want to optimize. This is the only reason currently that we are now going to take the next step and we want a context aware word embedding. This is what we are looking for. So what it means, we have a self-attention mechanism in a sentence and the word bank has a vector representation that is now really different from the static case but it's also context specific in all our sentences. So if you see here now our example sitting on a bank, now you have a vector representation in a pink vector, thinking about my bank account, and this is now a vector, a complete different vector to this bank vector, although the token or the word uh, bank is exactly the same, but it has a different vector embedding given that is referring to other words in our sentence. For example, here, bank would go very strongly indicate to account. Where in here, bank, you might have a reference to sitting on and maybe next to a river. So you see, bank has to somehow find its context in this sentence. So let's have a look how this is done. Just for overview, why we need self-attention, we want to achieve a better and semantic specific word embedding. This is what we're looking for, a word embedding. And where do we need self-attention? In all transformer-based applications, wherever you have a transformer, an encoder, a decoder, anything to do, this is, covers the complete sector of natural language processing up to vision. Whatever it is, this is where self-attention is happening. Now, what is self-attention? If you look at the preprint, attention is all you need. You see that they specialized on a scaled dot product attention, which is applied to all the words in a sentence. In a sequence, a sequence for us is a sentence, including some self-reference. Now, it's not all words, but it's all token. And you remember the token are important because if we then go with BERT, we have a classification token, we have a separation token, and also those tokens are taken care of. So let's have a look at this expression and explain some terms. What does scale mean? Scale is just a kind of normalization, like in theoretical physics, we have to normalize something. So scale is just a factor. A dot product, hey, we know dot products. Dot products is a kind of similarity measure. Remember when we had the, the, the word embeddings and the sentence embedding, and we calculated the cosine similarity of vectors? This is exactly a dot product. So we know dot product. What is attention? Now, attention you can imagine is something like a kind of a weighted sum. So what we are looking for is some attention weights or some some weight tensor you know, specifying our attention. Now let's have a closer look what this means. How should the system learn self-attention? And here we have to just head back in the past, but just for one slide. In the good old times, we could do something what's called a database. And you started with a query, a SQL, a query, uh, you, you ask the system a query, and the system checked your query against a key value pair. You know, key value pair, Python, you know what I mean. Now, if your key, for example, of this Q 
key value pair document here. The key was income statement. So the, the key reference of the document was income statement. And it was similar to the query and your query was show me the income statement. Then you can unlock the key specific values. You had a key value pair. So had you had a, a query, a question, you had here uh, something like a key value pair where you had keywords and here in the value you had the whole document, the text, the graphics, all calculation, income statements, whatever. So if the query and the key, the Q and the key, K, <laughs> were similar, you could unlock the, the content, the value of the document. Otherwise, now think about the dot product. Dot product is about similarity. If the dot product of the query times the key, so Q times K, yields a high similarity if they're close, so you ask, show me the income statement, and in the database you had something like, here, here's a keyword with income statement, we could unlock the values. So the data we searched for in the database. And in particular, our income statement. So remember, dot product Q times K. Now from this time, there's the convention and the kind of algorithm, but not so fast. So how should the system learn self-attention? So what do we need in a system? We need three parameters. Three parameters we can train backpropagation. So three learnable tensors. Now you might say, why three? Well, at first we have to calculate, or if we go like this, we have to calculate a similarity measure dot product. So we need at least two. And then of course we want to unlock some values. So what better than we say, okay, I have now a certain tensor, a free defined tensor that I start with. This is Q. Now you know where Q comes from. Then you have a tensor K, like key, K, you know where this comes from. And then we have a tensor that references V and you know that it stands for values. So what we have is of course only word embedding vectors. Remember that I showed you before with word to vec, we had this non-context aware word embedding vectors. Now we have word embedding vectors and now we simply construct our tensors. So we have three, three learnable weight tensors. So you say, okay, now I have three parameters I can play around with, I can learn, I can optimize, but which algorithm should I use? Now, the answer on this question is easy, exactly like we'd have done before. The dot product of Q times K. Remember, just one slide before, the dot product of the query times K when it yields a high similarity, we can unlock the values. Same analogon. We say here, we have the dot product of Q times K. Remember, there are now some tensors, some free tensor in the interplay here. And then we divide this by a simple scaling factor, some dimensionality factor we need for some nice gradients. Don't mind about it. And then what we wanna do we want to have a softmax functionality so that everything is between zero and one and it adds up to one. And what we have here is called attention weights or a weight tensor of our values. So this is how we do it. And those are the three, if you want tensors, the three parameters of the system we can tune. Now, if you want to know what, what is this? How, how can you imagine what this is? Now, easy. Imagine we have a sentence with four words. Hello, how are you? Like I showed you before, we want to have now a context-aware word embedding. So you want to see what are the words in the sentence if you have the word embedding, for example, welcome, you should take special care of what is really important, a dominant factor. Now, of course, Welcome to welcome, yes, we have a very high uh, reference value. But you see then there, there's no real further specification to how are you. Now, if you look at you, the person, 
you see of course you and you you have the maximum and the diagonal but as you can also see the, the word welcome what well, welcome is not really specific to you from the semantic it's just a hello it has a very low coefficient but however you see that how are even that you are looking for you how are you you have here also quite a high correlation dot two five dot three five and r almost has the same like you have in the diagonal so you see you have some beautiful weights in a matrix in a tensor and this is exactly what we are looking for if you have your word embedding which other words in the sentence you have especially to look out for that have a very strong reference to the semantic of your word in this sentence beautifully now that we understand this let's go back to our science you remember there was this beautiful beautiful preprint intention is all you need i have here the archive reference this is our formula that we have the dot product scaling factor softmax gives us the weight tensor the attention weight tensor of our values and if you now say okay and what was in attention is all you need you have this beautiful diagram that everybody uh, when it first sees it says what is this now you know exactly what it is because now you can see u and k is exactly what have he, we have here in our dot product q times k and q and k have a matri matrix multiplication yes exactly our dot product then you have some scaling factor in yellow yes we have some scaling factor in yellow optional is masking then have a softmax function so our softmax function this is exactly our formula is this here now you understand perfectly what's going on here and now you have a matrix multiplication with our values. So what you have is a scaled dot product attention. And they wrote that attention, depending on the query on the keys and on the values. And now you know what those are and where they come from. Equals the softmax function of exactly our dot product Q times K, of course, transpose by a scaling factor never mind the dimensionality constant and of course they are the weights of our values so this is the famous formula for our attention mechanism or you can read it if you think about this as a weighted sum you can say here that our attention if you now have the summation index that our attention weights our weight tensor with the index i and j dot product <laughs> to our vector our value vector j you have the summation over j so you end up with a vector an attention vector this is it now we understand perfectly what they had in mind with this schematic representation and why we have two multiplications here in our scaled dot product we know this and we understand this because this is just more or less the weights that we are looking for and that we want to calculate now if you are looking then to accelerate and you want to know the amount of computation that can be paralyzed on your cores on your i don't know if you have 100 500 cores or whatever how many things you can do in parallel now you take all of this here this is this little scale dot product attention uh, schematic something and you can run identical things in parallel for all the different uh, input vectors now of course afterwards you just concatenate the output and you have a multi-head attention don't worry about what is head you just have a multi-something attention mechanism this is it you want to calculate it fast you want to calculate it in a parallelized matter you can do it because there are no dependencies so you really can parallelize it and this was it this was the easiest explanation and visualization i can think of if you say hey what is the scaled dot product attention
from attention is all you need that we will find everywhere in encoders in our transformers. Thank you and I see you in the next one.